this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hi there, today I want to talk a little bit about a typical workflow which I have and you can have a totally different workflow obviously but uh, this is how I go about it. I recently made a tutorial about this uh, sachet or, or sack or whatever and uh, then after finishing the tutorial I animated it uh, because it consists of uh, NURPS circles and the circles it's just four circles really who make this geometry here and uh, you can do all kinds of things and what I did was I keyframed several things here so it uh, warps in different ways so all the curves have uh, def uh, well not really deformations translations and scalings and uh, nothing else really so it's very simple to animate such a thing and uh, I did it more or less randomly like the squeezing thing and a little wobbling here wobb, 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 at the end and the last frame for all keyframes here frame 200 is exactly the same as the first frame so I can loop the whole animation for rendering I used the GPU the graphics card because uh, this texture is easily rendered with a graphics card and uh, my graphics card is pretty low price it's uh, a couple of years old already a GeForce GTX 1070 I always tend to forget uh, what the brand name is uh, but that's what it is in the Arnold renderer I set the camera anti-aliasing to 5 and um, in the common tab here I call it Satchit Lives and I made the image format PNG that renders single images and I think uh, it's the one of the ways to go really when you render an animation you later have to uh, stitch them together if you want to proceed and that's something I am also going to show you today uh, here you need to enter the start and the end frame if you see this grayed out you need to go up here and change the single format to name and number and extension like here uh, the camera to be rendered is called perspective one don't render all the cameras the pers perspective for example where you model your things you don't need that for rendering if you have a ren render camera and you will usually have such a thing and here I have an a HD 7 720 format which is quite good and uh, well it took about a second per frame to render with the GPU when I finished rendering I usually call up fcheck which comes with I think many Autodesk programs and fcheck is a very simple program which does an amazing job open animation and I just search for the first frame of this animation saturated lives it's 200 frames actually which is uh, 8 seconds and then the fcheck algorithm reads in all the frames step by step and once uh, it's finished with 200 frames it places them back in real time so with 24 frames per second in this case what you can also see is I rendered the camera with uh, depth of field uh, I could have done uh, a rendering with motion blur as well but depth of field is very nice here you see everything which is a little bit closer to us is out of focus now for example here and you have this line here wonderful with a reflection always in focus because well that's where I put the focus on and the anti-aliasing is quite okay here it's a little bit uh, grainy or noisy in at the edge of the shadow but basically this is uh, more than good for this purpose in most cases I'm ready now I can just leave this or skip this but in this case I called up Shotcut which is an open source program and Shotcut is a little bit strange to use if you're used to complex programs such as Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro X but uh, 
it's a it's a very slick and nice program indeed once you've uh, seen how it works it, it's just fine so I imported uh, the the clip here and you need to go to uh, information this is the German interface this means information and to tick picture sequence or whatever it's called in English uh, it means the sequence of those images should be read into this program so this is important to do apart from that I just looped it four times and uh, I added three audio tracks the first audio track let me mute this one and that one uh, sounds like this it's a music I composed for a different purpose for actually a radio broadcast here on public radio in Germany and it fits nicely here I thought and uh, the loop works okay so I can just leave the music there until the end and then I fade it out after well 20 seconds or so, 30 seconds. Then I thought, why not add a few sound effects? And that's what I did here. Basically, I recorded without actually synchronizing anything with it. I just recorded my voice and I uh, made a few strange sounds. Just ad lib. Oh? Oh. Mm. Uh, oh. <laughs> and then I imported that track into the second audio track here, A2, and cut it up into several pieces. And uh, basically I thought that two tracks would serve the purpose even better because uh, all the pauses in my <laughs> strange noise recording can be filled with just the same track which is just starting a little bit earlier so this is the final track now oh. 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 And then I go to export and under export in shortcut you have amazing options really and then I just render it to disk and here we are and I wish you a very good day like always. Oh. Oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>